This video is going to introduce you to some of the fundamentals of content editing within Document X 2010. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the page map and that's a strip that runs down the left hand side of the editor page here. And this is very much as described, it's a map of the content that I've got in the topic that I'm currently working with. Um, so what we can see here is that each block within the page map here represents a um, an element within the content on the right hand side here so I've got an H1 element which is the heading element at the top here and then several paragraphs, another H1 and a paragraph with an image tag embedded within it. And there's a couple of great things that the page map allows me to do. The first one is if I hover over any of the elements here I can get a quick preview of the content but I can also see the XHTML source that sits behind that tag so that's a really quick and easy way to see um, at a glance what the content is behind that particular element. Um, what I can also do is reorder using the page map and drag and drop. So for example if I wanted to move this header, um, this heading section rather, down below the two paragraphs that follow it, I can just grab it, drag it and drop it using the page map here and it will reorder to the place that I wanted it to be. The page map shows the currently selected uh, element as orange so you can always see exactly where you are within the document. Something you may find yourself doing quite often is uh, creating tables in content to organize and structure information within your topics. Um, so it's quick and easy from the Document X content editor. Uh, what I'm going to do is create a new blank paragraph where I want my table to be inserted. and I'm going to use the insert table command on the ribbon here going to select on the drop down the number of initial rows and columns that I want to be created. Click and this dialog allows me to select some style options for the table and for the cells within the table initially um, but I'm just going to go here with the default style for the table and there we are the tables being created and inserted in the content and I can start typing away in the individual cells. Now there is a separate movie all about table editing. There's a bunch of different table design commands, um, ways of selecting multiple um, table cells, so on and so forth, for tables specifically. So I'd recommend that you have a look at that video when you have a chance. So I'm just going to cover the basic functionality here of actually creating a new table in our content. So a fundamental activity of working in the content editor will be applying styles to the content that you create. Um, you know, commonly to apply emphasis to particular words or to enlarge the font size or a range of different things depending on how you want to style your content. So the Document X content editor has a range of different functionality for styling your content um, and that ranges from yeah, basic formatting such as bold and italic through to styling. So I'm just going to start with the basics. I'm going to mark a couple of words uh, in my content here as bold. So I'm going to select these two words here and what's happened here is as I selected these two words and then moved my cursor slightly upwards I get what's called the mini toolbar um, and that contain, contains some of the common formatting commands that I might want to um, get access to. I can get access to those same commands from the ribbon and also from the right click um, toolbar that appears but it's a neat way of making that functionality available to you automatically so just to go through that once more I've highlighted the content drifted my cursor up slightly and the um, mini toolbar pops into view. So I'm just going to make that content to bold. And on my ribbon I can see that's highlighted as bold. So I can remove the bold just as easily as applying it. So I've got bold, italic, underline um, as the common sort of styles to apply there. And we can also start apply paragraph styles to the current paragraph. So for example if I want to write a line, middle align or left align, those are available from the ribbon bar there. And within that same group on the ribbon, we also have indent and outdent for the paragraph. And those are also available from the context menu that appears. So I can do that directly from the context menu if I don't want to bring up the ribbon tab to do that. Um, creating lists, uh, bulleted and numbered lists, is real easy within the content editor here. So let's imagine I want to turn this particular paragraph into a list. I would just select uh, the numbered list item. And then to create additional list items, I just need to press enter at the end of a, a list item. 
and it will automatically create the list items beyond that one for me. And if I want to create a second level of list, so an indented list below this one, all I need to do is use the existing indent command and it will automatically change the numbering scheme to an indented list, so list item 2A. And again, if I press enter, that will continue the list beyond that list item 2B. And using outdent will allow me to go back to the previous hierarchical uh, list numbering. So creating a set of structured list items is really easy using a combination of the list commands and the indent and outdent commands. So going beyond the basic formatting of bold, italic, underline, um, DocumentX includes a rich set of style support that, that's built on the web standard CSS um, cascading style sheets styles technology and that's really accessible within your content editor here and is really reusable throughout the project um, as styles are stored in a, a CSS style sheet file within your project and can be reused between different topics so I'm just going to imagine that I want to create a special style um, for some particular terms that I'm um, calling out in my content here so let's imagine I want to make those appear in a sort of light grey colour um, and slightly italicized within my content here. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the style picker on the right hand side here and I'm going to click the create a new style rule button. And that brings me up a dialog in which I can define this new style that I'm going to create and the first thing I'm going to do in here is to give the style a meaningful name so that I can recognize it if I want to reuse it elsewhere. So I'm going to say term as the name and as I mentioned what I want to do is to set it to an italic style font and I'm going to make it a slightly different colour than the normal text, so I'm going to make it a grey colour in fact I'm going to customise that and make it slightly darker I think and we get a preview down the bottom of the style page here um, showing us what that style is going to look like when we create it so I'm going to click OK and this will do two things. First of all it will define that style as a name style within our project style sheet so that I can reuse it and that has now appeared on our uh, style picker list and it will also apply that style to the selection that I had in the uh, editor here. So you can see that style has been applied. So if I then want to go ahead and apply that style to other text I can just click on that existing style name I've already defined in the style picker and apply that to different places. So you can see it's a really quick and easy way to define both a new style for a particular piece of text but also to make that reusable as a named style that I can reuse elsewhere. So even in other topics within the same project or within the content file editor I can reuse that style. The final fundamental of content editing that I'm going to cover in this video is linking between topics. So if you have a uh, topic which contains some information that's related to another topic elsewhere in the project it's very common to want to create a hyperlink to that other topic. I'm going to create a hyperlink in a new paragraph within my content here um, and the way I can do that is from the hyperlink button on the uh, toolbar here and you can see from the tooltip there there's also a shortcut key we can use control K so I'm going to go with that and I'm going to select on the link designer dialog here the second topic in my project which is the RSS syntax topic click OK and there we can see the hyperlink has been created. That concludes this short video which has been a short introduction to some of the fundamentals of content editing including an introduction to the page map, the element bar, how to create tables, work with lists, um, apply some basic formatting, stars and linking.